Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP Tom Morgan. Yesterday I did a whole video about creating a Microsoft Teams presence bot and linking it to Amazon Alexa. There was one thing I didn't talk about, I didn't really understand actually, until I had it pointed out to me by, um, by someone. And that was the way that I connected the Amazon Alexa adapter there's a much easier way and that was the whole thing that was announced at build and I completely missed it and I didn't get it in my head um, until someone was kind enough to point it out to me. So I wanted to address that now. So if you've seen the blog post from yesterday, uh, you'll know that I went and created a Teams presence bot, brought that through into bot framework and then layered on the Amazon Alexa stuff. What I want to do is rewind a little bit to the point where we have a bot and we have a bot working in bot framework and then I want to show you how easy it is to take that and make that work today with Alexa um, in the, the new stuff that was announced at Build 2020 um, just a few weeks ago. So on screen now, um, I have the resource group I created yesterday um, and the bot that I created yesterday. So let me just show you what that looks like. Uh, it's web app bot. Um, oh, what did I do there? Uh, okay, like. So I can go to test in web chats and we'll just test that this bot is still working. If you remember from yesterday, it just doesn't differentiate between the keywords. It always says the same thing all of the time. So you can see I'm in do not disturb state. I flipped my team status to do not disturb just before I started this uh, video. So that's, I've been there and I've been there for one minute. So what do we want to do if we now want to add uh, Amazon Alexa capabilities to this? It's so easy now. Look at this. We go to channels. We go to Alexa. Alexa shows up as a first party channel for the bot framework. That's pretty amazing. So click on Alexa and we need to put in our skill ID. Okay, so we have to go through the same setup that I went through yesterday with the Alexa developer console. Um, there's full instructions on how to do that here and I'll put a link to, um, to this blog post as well um, in the video. But we go to our developer console, we set up everything as we did yesterday. Um, the only difference is when you go, there's two things you need to do. The first is you need to get your um, skill ID. There's a couple of different ways to do this. The way that I find is really the easiest is just to go to the URL, look for the thing in the URL that is amazon.one.ask.skill and then a GUID and pick it up and take that and pop it in here like so. And the next thing we need to do is take this URL down here, which is our Alexa service endpoint URI. So we'll copy that. And that goes, if you go to endpoints, you choose HTTPS as your endpoint. You select your certificate type. This is all the same as the stuff we did yesterday. Um, and it's all in that documentation. Um, but you put that in there. So that's different. That's not the, what we did yesterday was the endpoint of your bot slash API slash Alexa. We don't need to do any of that anymore. We don't need to add any of that um, Alexa adapter code. It's all baked into the bot framework. All we need to do is provide this um, URI um, that we've been given. So we can save that. Uh, we can save this. Save both of those things. And then go to test. And we should be able to say, ask presence helper what Tom is doing. Now, right oh, now, there we go. Tom so, is in do not disturb state. He has been like this for four minutes. So the interesting thing about that is that there's no lag. Um, you know, making that change in bot framework instantly took effect. Um, flows all the way through to the, you know, the, the developer console stuff, takes immediate effect, that's great. If you're doing this kind of development stuff, having any kind of lag is really uncertain because you don't know if you've made a mistake or what and then you try it five minutes later and it works fine. So that's really good to see. That tie up seems to be really, really seamless. Um, and this is really exciting because it means you can take anything you've written in the bot framework. You need to make sure that it's up to um, version, I want to say 3.8, but let's double check that. So let's open these step-by-step -step instructions. 4.8, sorry. Um, of course it is. 
so you want to make sure you're at 4.8 or later. Now, if you did what I did yesterday and took the code from uh, an Azure sample, so you created your web app bot in Azure and then downloaded the Echo bot sample and started from there, you'll already be on 4.8. You don't need to do anything. This is just if you've got older bot projects that you want to add Alexa to, um, you just need to make sure you brought them up to 4.8 um, at least before you try doing this. Okay, final thing I'm going to do because it's fun is take the um, the Alexa device I've got here and just do exactly that same thing. Just make sure it all works. Um, and then we'll have added Amazon Alexa channel, which I can, I'm not going to start calling it, the Amazon Alexa channel um, to our bot framework bot, which is pretty amazing. Alexa, ask presence helper what Tom is doing now. Right now, Tom is in do not disturb state. He has been like this for six minutes. How cool is that? Right, that's all I wanted to tell you today. Quick video. Um, but yeah, if you did all the stuff yesterday, this might be useful. If you're watching this and you've no idea what I'm talking about, go and watch the video from yesterday. It's 90 minutes long, but actually just be aware of the last 10 minutes of it is you can kind of like watch for interest, but this is now way the way easier way of adding uh, Amazon Alexa to your bot framework projects. Thanks very much for watching.